making a movie is about like taking a hike. Um, you're miserable the whole time, and then when you're done, everybody stops and they're like, guys, wasn't that so much fun? Like, didn't we all just like bond together? That was great. <laughs> You should probably watch the movie. And then you'll yeah, if you're watching behind the scenes, yeah, you should, watch you should have already seen the What are you movie? doing? Like, go watch the movie. <laughs> of all the things to fight a guy with a water gun, you bring a flamethrower? Hello, my name is Blake Connor. I am the co-director, I'm an assistant writer, I'm the lead editor, lead visual effects artist, uh, and a plethora of other things, producer on this film, Super Mario Sunshine the Musical. I've been doing this for two years now, uh, and I'm ready to see it through, ready to be done with it. My name is Josh Elliott. I am a lot of things in this project. I am the lead writer. I am a co-director, one of the overseeing monkey people that uh, tries to keep all of the other monkeys um, in line and inside of the barrel. It's like every action that I've taken or every goal that I've been moving forward in service to has been for this project in some manner or another, whether it was building the flood over nine months or working for weeks on end on these visual effects or sitting down and making spreadsheets and call sheets on when to get people where. It's just, it's so all encompassing. It's all in service of this one Product. So I started working with uh, Josh and Blake like forever and a half years ago. And this is always something Josh had talked about. He talked about doing Luigi's Mansion and Mario and Sunshine. And then we finally did Luigi's Mansion and he looks at me and goes, you know what's coming next. Super Mario Sunshine, scene 27F, take one. I realized that this project was going to become a reality um, pretty much when I accepted it was going to become a reality because um, Josh accepted very shortly after we were finished with Luigi's Mansion that he wanted to do a sequel and initially I told him no. Well I didn't say no, I said wait. It was something I always wanted to do but logistically we didn't know if it was going to be possible. They were very ambitious for this project and that's understandable. The last one was very low budget and there was not a lot going on and it was successful, you know and they wanted to go bigger, which is understandable, who wouldn't want to? This project is different than Luigi's Mansion, the musical, in the sense that it is uh, twice as long and probably about five times the scale. Luigi's Mansion was uh, singularly shot in uh, a single weekend over at Johnson University, and we spent four or five weekends at Johnson University in addition to the weekends that we spent here in Bloomington and at the Indiana Dunes and in Florida. Just hearing Josh talk about it, in conception and being like, okay, well, how are you gonna do this? And then them bringing all of these people together to help work on it, who are willing to work on it, you know, to just help a friend out. felt like the glue holding a lot of this stuff together. I don't think that I'm super talented in and of myself, but I believe that I have a, a passion for bringing talented people together and seeing what we can all do. I have been routinely impressed by the people whom they have called in to help execute their ideas so well. I just came here on a mission so that I could put myself to him, show my time. But now that I cannot speak away, I have no choice. Now we will be battling with me. Welcome to Island of Hey, 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 you suck! I hate those commercials. I am Bowser, who is kind of a bad guy see me uh, as Petey Piranha, the uh, child of the, the plants, if you will. My name is Joffrey Livingston. Emily Pazik. Hi, I'm Judge Pianta. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Pianta. I am the guy that ruins Mario's life. So I will be reprising my role as the Toad. 
a new role as Toadsworth, which is my most prominent role in the upcoming film. Uh, he is a wise old sage of a toad and very bad at uh, security detail, but his heart's in the right place. My first role was the toad and my last role is toads. I am every single toad. There's a difference between the toad and toads. The role of Wiggler was something that was completely unexpected. Um, there was another actress that was slated for the Wiggler and she decided that it wasn't going to be possible for her to um, do that. Blake was like, how do you feel about being Wiggler? Um, so I'm Officer Tyler. I'm a, I'm a cop with the grass skirt. So now I'm going to be the mayor's son, um, who is a six-year-old um, that is learning shapes. So the cast was a very difficult thing to, uh, to nail down, uh, just because there's such a wide range of people from different places. Um, the biggest hoop we had to jump through in casting was uh, finding someone to play Peach, because um, if you've seen Luigi's Mansion the Musical, Spoiler alert, it is not the same actress. She was unavailable this time around, which, you know, we totally get, like, life happens and also COVID makes things 10 times more difficult. Searched for someone for a pretty long time. And um, we eventually found uh, Emily. She's fantastic. He messaged me and just asked me if I'd be interested and I said, hell yeah, because, you know, I need more film experience. This is a fun, silly thing to do. And yeah, and I, I mean, I know Mario. I played Mario Kart. I get to sing and act and edit and film and take pictures, and it's been great. For this musical, it was fun to come back, and it was weird how many, like, memories just came from just putting that outfit back on. I definitely couldn't have given as much time this time as I did last time, but I'm glad that I was able to help the little bit that I could, and it was a lot of fun. A lot of the other cast members were very easy to nail down because they wanted to be in it, and they're our good friends. I got involved with Mario Sunshine partly because I'm a music major and partly because I am good friends with the wonderful directors. Josh asked me, hey, you can, I need a blazer jacket because I've lost mine. So now I'm here wearing a grass skirt, as you can see. Uh, I'm just uh, friends with Blake, and I'm just the natural big guy for all of his films. Um, there were a lot of dropouts because people have commitment issues. Um, and so I don't have commitment issues. Um, and so Josh asked me to, to fill in. Mostly, like, I thought of Blake batting his eyes at me, and that was it. Which, for the record, he didn't, but just the mere thought of it was, was enough. Also, Journey, who is filming right now, she was like, hey, you want to come out and take pictures um, at this shoot outdoors? And I was like, yeah. And then I went out and sweated my ass off for about four hours, and it was really fun. I've worked with Blake before um, on a smaller film like a couple of years back, um, and I really like working with him. It's why he gets all of us to come back, because we like him. We like the way he treats us. We enjoy the process. It's all really good, honestly. They're all wonderful people with the cast and the rest of the crew. A lot of really cool people. A lot of very different people. Everybody that's put work into this musical really cares that it's done well. Um, not just for the movie's sake, but for the people involved in it. They want to make sure that everybody knows that they're valued doing this musical and doing it well is one of the ways to best reflect that. And they really care about that. I think we've got a really phenomenal crew on our hands. I mean, just a wonderful group of people. Uh, I'd be hard pressed to find a group of people who are more motivated, who are more enthusiastic and more eager to help in all of these regards because honestly, we've put them through the ringer and back. Quite literally half the movie, I had no idea how we were gonna do. Almost the start of production, we had no idea how we were gonna film these things. It has been very difficult shooting across all these locations for Mario Sunshine the Musical because it means that we're packing up our things, we're traveling for hours on end, sometimes we get there, things aren't you know, as we planned, things aren't as we expected. We're dragging heavy equipment across sandy beaches with people all over the place. We're going out into public. I got to travel a lot um, for filming. Got, we got to go to all kinds of cool locations. You can 
goof around on set um, with uh, people that you know you're good friends with or you're becoming good friends with. You know, it's it's a good time. Definitely, we've caused a caused a scene everywhere we go because how could we not? We're a, we're a band of circus freaks out there, dressed in Nintendo attire. <laughs> We we're both Nintendo fanboys, hopelessly nerdy, and uh, honestly, like it's just such a fun universe. It's such a fun thing. It's it's appealing to so many different people. Mario Sunshine, it's like all the the story beats from the game are there. We just added a few layers to it. They're both very creative and very fun people. Blake and Josh are some of the most collaborative and caring uh, people I've ever worked with. It's been really really cool to watch them adapt. Uh, to the challenges we faced, one due to COVID uh, and due to just not, you know, knowing what's next. You know, there were months of lockdown. Are we opening up? Are we not opening up? Can we shoot in Knoxville? Can we not shoot in Knoxville? Well, wh where can we shoot to get the desired effect? Um, that whole process and watching them make sure that the people they were working with were cared for at the same time was really, really special. I really saw some creative problem solving from Blake and Josh. Pick a scene out of a hat, and uh, I struggled to figure out how that scene would come to life. Figuring out how to get such a large amount of people to a beach location, or if it was, you know, writing a scene where Mario fought a giant robot, or a scene where Bowser's talking to his son inside of a volcano. It's been a challenge, but some things have been bigger challenges than others. Um, collecting people's schedules. Um, I think the first weekend, the first weekend of shooting that we did down at my dad's shop over at uh, Blue Chip Technologies, that was uh, nothing short of uh, misery. Um, things are breaking, things are melting, everybody's hungry. Um, we're all in pain, we're all sweaty, and we're making a movie. That's just how it goes. I have been to the brinks of my mental sanity. As far as producing goes, I feel that um, it's been a very, very difficult journey, but I think that we've been making good progress. I think one of the best things about working with them is knowing that they'll finish the project, and there's a lot to be said for that. Most of us just talk about what we want to make, but don't actually do it. So being able to join something and actually see it through to completion is really cool. My vision for this project has always been to have it completed, um, which I know that sounds a little dumb, but it's, it's something that has really haunted me from the beginning of it. COVID-19 got in the way. I think there was some denial, kind of, we're still gonna film it during these dates, but as things progressed, we kind of realized we're gonna have to really rethink the whole thing. Um, the 13 day shoot became spread out. Definitely some creativity on, on their end with how they filmed it and they couldn't get people in certain locations that would just film it months later. So I believe there are certain scenes where you see a character talking and then it cuts to a different angle and it's filmed in a completely different state, a different month. Um, any part of the film that is uh, chaotic and nonsensical, um, I think reflects my style well. I think we need that uh, dichotomy of uh, me being on the verge of a mental breakdown and him looking like he doesn't care at all. With costuming, I really love to take a uh, grounded and realistic approach um, with characters like P.D. Piranha um, and Bowser. Personally, like my, my style with it is I like, you know, subtle costuming. I'm big on character and I'm big on dialogue. And I think there's a lot of good in both of those aspects in the musical, so. I think all of the visual effects are going to reflect my specific style, the way those are cut, and any of the transitions or lack thereof, because I think I did some of them really well and I think I did some of them not at all. Trapped in another cage. I can't be without you. I've, I've been doing CG for a long time, but nothing, nothing like this. I was in charge of anything 3D 
any 3D effects. So mostly Mecha Bowser. So it helped out here and there, filming a couple shots. We went up to Indiana for a while and filmed, helped with the green screen. I like doing CGI, but it can be a little lonely. And so being with the crew and actors and seeing all of the weird chemistry and energy from that really motivates me to work on all the more tedious stuff later. <laughs> it was awesome building sets in the garage and in the basement. So for the control panel for Bowser Jr., I used Inkscape. I drew up the control panel to work and cut it out of cardboard on a laser cutter. It was right before we shut down due to COVID. Um, I actually got laid off right after that. Yeah, the last day of work, I stayed late, cut it all out on the laser cutter, took it home and glued it all together. We did the control panel for Bowser Jr. We did Bowser's armor. Mostly it's been CGI stuff, adding CGI palm trees to random shots. Lots of water, fire simulations. Mecha Bowser has been the main thing. It's been like a year and a half working on that. I guess there were a lot of things I thought would be pretty simple, because I've done them individually. When you add it all together, layers upon layers of different fire and water and all kinds of complicated mechanical things. And my computer had a hard time. I actually had to build a new computer just to do it all. But I'm, I'm pretty excited to see the Mecha Bowser battle. I haven't actually watched it all pieced together. I just kind of do each shot. Some of the biggest challenges in this project, I think, have been the, um, the Mecha Bowser, for sure, trying to figure that out, um, making the flood. My friend Gage Perkins and I have been in the process of building the flood prop, basically Mario's water backpack. Able to uh, uh, use um, the motors in here. Should we just? Oh, we're gonna have to attach his head. Now, oh, so oh, yeah. oh, 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 You see these reaction Bruce. times? <laughs> hey, I thought very, it. very little of this has been easy. I would definitely do it different if I were to do it again, but it's been a learning process, trial and error. And I don't think. Well, I was going to say I don't think I'd change anything, but I think I'd change a lot of things, actually, if I could go back. I am the lead musician, composer, music guy for Super Mario Sunshine. Recording somebody, mixing, uh, using virtual instruments and plugins to create a song, uh, all the way to the, the final product of the song that you hear both uh, on the soundtrack and in the movie. Uh, I was directly involved in all of that. It's difficult to write music that is interesting for other people to listen to, especially when it's over a video game you've never played <laughs> and a story that you're not very familiar with. I had Josh and he helped out a lot in terms of helping me understand what was going on and what would work well in the music so far as how it um, is conducive to telling the story. I've, I definitely have a big hand in the music production. Um, I assembled the team um, and worked very closely with each of them. The challenge that I faced was definitely COVID. Another challenge is just my location. Uh, I'm in Evansville, Indiana, and we've got people in the movie that are in Bloomington, Indiana, Chicago, Knoxville, you name it. There's probably somebody there that's helping contribute to this film. So I had to find out how to uh, record and get recordings of all of these people from all over the country. Um, that's where people like Austin Scott came in, Josh Elliott came in, Blake Connor came in, uh, getting the things remotely and being able to send them. Luckily for us, most of the music was written most of the songs were written before the pandemic really came into full swing. It, it's really fun 
working with songs other people have written. The other person I worked with most on this musical was Patrick Metter, and just being able to work with him has been one of the most <laughs> encouraging parts of this journey because he's so witty and smart and funny and caring, uh, just like the rest of the crew, but really being able to work on the technical details like, oh, wouldn't it be so cool if we added a piccolo here? Like just, just these small little details that he notices that really make parts into a whole to talk with Austin and, and Joff Livingston about, you know, how the inner workings of a song need to connect to best build the energy uh, and things like that. And, and we were able to do that from hours away from each other. Um, I was like, wow, this is really good. <laughs> I was very pleased with the work we had done on that one. Mario Sunshine impacted my life by uh, completely stealing 2020 from me. Um, although the world was shut down, so I don't know what else I would have been doing if I hadn't been filming Mario Sunshine. It took so much of my life because, uh, you know, every day it seemed like I was doing something. It's very difficult, especially for someone like me, because I like having ideas and then moving on and having more ideas. Having an idea two years ago and sticking with it for two years, now that, that has been the biggest test I've, I've ever undergone doing something like that. I am an arrogant fool um, and thought, I, didn't, I never thought that it would be easy, but I didn't realize how difficult it really would be. I think this project has taught me resiliency. It's taught me that you're much stronger and much more capable than you think you are. I love any project like this because, you know, we start at nothing and then as it goes on, like it becomes more and more and more real um, as things like get filmed, as things get done and like as everything comes together. Um, and that's just always a really cool progression. I'm so excited that we're finally getting to do it because it felt like for two and a half years it just was a big question mark and to finally have a resolution and a premiere feels really awesome. I'm very nervous right now. Why? I think, I can't say why. Okay. I hate what I just did. Whoa. I'm just here to rob the place. One of the best things about working on this project, me behind the scenes, has been getting to interact with these people, work with Blake and Josh, and just to see everyone come together and make something this big and hopefully this beautiful. I'm really excited. I'm just super excited to see myself on the big screen for the first time. I don't know how it's gonna translate to the big screen, but I think it'll be very cool. And I've never done something like this before, so very excited. It's a uh, day like this. It's a day I always knew would come. Uh, I've been able to perfectly visualize it in my head, but uh, nobody told me how it was going to feel. So, it's... It's a lot. <laughs> Any time over the past year and a half uh, when things were difficult uh, or I was asking myself at three in the morning why am I doing this to myself uh, I'd be right here with all of you we've taken to calling ourselves colloquially uh, the big kahunas in our group <laughs> chat uh, that is uh, Parker Everett, Patrick Metter, Quill and Shear, Timothy Gephardt and of course Josh Elliott. Uh, you volunteered to give me more time than I could ever ask for uh, you've been charitable and so generous with everything that you've offered to us, and uh, at every step of the way, you have over-delivered. The greatest joys of making this movie. Um, my sappy answer is getting to spend time with all of my friends. It's as much as about the craft as it is about being with good friends. Uh, and so that's that's what I enjoyed. Um, I wouldn't do this for people who I didn't like as much as the people who are doing this. 
it's just a lot of people having fun and doing what they love. And luckily we have enough people who love to do a lot of different things like filming and acting and composing or writing scripts. So it was just a very fun and lighthearted experience. Why couldn't Mario get a man cave in his house? Because he didn't have much room. I'm on this side. Nice! Might I have... Jesus! They robbed us! I don't know, I lost my keys, they stole the weapons! Oh, all I got is this baton! I don't know what to do! This sounds very serious, officer. What do you think? Of course it's serious! <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I've really got to be going. No go, sir. <laughs> and I don't throw a pet. Damn. All right. We're right gonna soft cut. Don't. It's my baton. Hey, hey, hey! hey. Toadsworth, phone the mayor. Make sure no ships are leaving Rico Harbor. Tyler. Oh, Bianca Hill. Toadsworth is my father's lover. You got any clap back for that, Toadsworth? I didn't hear what she said. Get it. This is a total waste of my talent. Go away! Get out of my room, Mom! I'm playing Minecraft! <laughs> that you have to take for yourself. <laughs> this project on your own um, thank you for uh, thank you for your interest in it I hope that we uh, I hope that you know we did a good job and you enjoyed it enjoy the movie and go in peace I love you and I want to spend my life with you no pain could cover up the love shine between a plumber and princess